Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make this easy pet bed using whatever fabric you want to. Now I know when I've looked for pet beds for my two dogs, um, it's pretty limited on the fabric choices. So we thought it would be fun to be able to use whatever fabric we want and make it whatever size we want for our pets. So let me show you how easy this is. Now the back side has the flap here. So you'll be able to remove the cushion inside and be able to wash this. So that's always important to me too. Of course, they get dirty over time. Um, this, the measurements on, for this are on the free download section of the Shabby Fabrics homepage. That's a link at the very bottom of our website. And there's so many projects there. You'll find inspiration for all kinds of things besides the pet bed. Um, and just keep in mind that while this is 20 by 30, you can follow the same steps that I'll be showing you today to make the pet bed any size you want. So let's get started. As I mentioned, on the back there's the flaps. We're going to start with those flaps. I'll put this aside for the moment. The top of the, of the uh, pillow bed in this instance is 20 by 30. So we have our two flaps. Now, let me show you what we've done. It'll be easier if you see the back side of this. Okay. So you just make two rectangles and then they crisscross like this. So that's what creates the flap in the back. And all that we did here was just fold over an inch, fold over an inch and just sew twice. So you can see how that looks. Now let's put that right side up. I wanted to show you what that looked like on the back. Let's just pretend that I've sewn that down. All you'll do to know how much to crisscross, let's line up on our mat, let's line up on that, that five. I just picked that number because that's a nice number to work with. You're just gonna overlap it so that it's the same size as your top. Now what we did, obviously this would have been stitched down, this one stitched down. We like to go ahead and base this closed. So we ran an eighth of an inch stitch from here to about right there so that that was all attached. But now I want to show you this side. We have kind of a gusset, um, a border, I guess you could call it, but I think I think of it more of a, as a gusset. We want to make that next. Those are just strips, but you'll need to, um, unless you're cutting down the length of a long piece of fabric, which would be wonderful because then it'd be one long strip and you wouldn't have any seams. But most of us are cutting across the width of the fabric and we end up with these shorter strips. So I just wanted to show you, um, we're just splicing on the 45. And if you've never done that, I want to show you how to do that. It's very simple. For that, I like to use a friction pen and my six and a half inch ruler rather than working with a big ruler. So you're going to lay your piece out horizontal and I like to use the lines on my mats and you'll grab another one of your strips and you'll go vertical with this one and that can be I don't know we can put it right there if we want to so I'm going to draw a line from this corner to the other with my friction pen and I like that friction pen and you know why I love that friction pen if you've seen any other video I've done because it erases so let's say I didn't like that line or I got off on that. I can always just um, erase that away with a hot iron. So before I go too far away, I'm going to go ahead and pin this. And then I'm going to take that to the sewing machine. And I'm going to go ahead and sew across that. And when I come back, I'm going to go ahead and press that seam open, trim, and we'll go to the next step. Now that I've sewn that splice, I call it a splice together, I like to take it to the sewing, or the pressing mat rather, let me show you how I like to press these. It just makes for a more finished look. You have that all the way open and press that open. I find that when strips are joined on the diagonal, they're less obvious. They, it seems like, here, let me show it to you. I haven't even trimmed this. Do you see how you can almost not notice it? But somehow with a butt joint, when they're just butted right up, they become a little more obvious. So I think that's why this is very popular in quilting, is that we don't really want those seams to be showing at all, if possible. So I'm just going to trim that, just about a visual quarter of an inch. Maybe that's a little bit more. 
Now, sewing the gusset or I guess what you call the border onto the pet bed, I recommend that you start sewing this on the front rather than the back that has the two flaps that are kind of just secured with those basting stitches at this point. So let's get this out of the way for now. So what we're going to do, I don't really feel a need to pin. This is our top. Ah, one thing, let's do this ahead of time. Let's get that ruler back and that friction pen, pen back. What's gonna happen is we're gonna start sewing this on, leaving the a first like four or five inches open because we're gonna come back around with our gusset and we're gonna join it up for a really tailored finished look. Hey, these are our pets, we love our pets. We want even our pet beds to look finished and stylish. Um, in the corners, in order to pivot here, we need to have a way to pivot. For that reason, we're gonna take that six and a half inch ruler and our friction pen, and I might even use a red one this time. We carry red and black. And I'm gonna go ahead using my ruler there's a corner right here that's a quarter inch. Quarter inch on this side, quarter inch on this side. I'm gonna put that right down there. And I'm gonna mark that spot. This way and this way. Those are our beginning and our end of when we sew the strips on. You're gonna, it'll make more sense as I go. For now, just do this step and you'll see. I'll just do a cup, two of these at this point you get the idea that we're gonna mark the four corners. When you start coming down with this strip, where you see that corner, you stop there. Do not go past that point because that's where we're gonna clip in a little bit with our scissors and we're gonna pivot. So I've marked two of the corners. I'm gonna start, oh, maybe here. There's no magical place to start. And again, leave the first four, five, six inches open we're just gonna sew a quarter of an inch. Let's go do that now. And when we get near that, that mark, we're going to stop. Now you might be asking, why don't I mark and cut now? It just seems like as you're, especially when you don't pin, this thing kind of tends to migrate and I don't know exactly where it's going to land. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew, 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 sew. And when I get closer, I'm gonna mark my gusset. Follow me along and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Let's bring that machine over. Leaving our opening, our, our little flap here, five or six inches. Okay. And I'm gonna, if you have a machine that has a needle down position, use it. This is the perfect time to use it because you're gonna pivot in the corner. So I'm gonna change, thankfully I have this. On my featherweight, I definitely don't have that feature, um, but I surely do on this one. So I'm gonna use it to my advantage today. So we'll keep sewing. And as I'm approaching that corner here, I want my needle to land in that corner. So what I'm gonna do right now with my friction pen, I'm gonna kind of get my presser foot out of the way. I can see the line that I marked below on the fabric beneath, but now my strip is covering that. But if I move it off to the side ever so slightly, I can transfer that line. I can visually see how I'm right on top of that line. Because when I move it to the side, I can see that the two lines right there are one on top of the other and same is about like, and I can also go back in with my ruler if I'm not sure and I want to make double sure. Now I'm just going to mark that right there. There we go. Okay. Now I'm absolutely sure I'm in the right spot and you see that little corner right there. All right. We're also going to take, because we need to, we need to have some relief. So we're going to snip in on a 45 degree angle till we're a couple, oh, I don't know, two, three threads away. Don't go any closer than that. Um, or you're going to, you're going to weaken it in that area unnecessarily. Now let's keep going. 
you might need to hand crank it depending on where your your stitch is going to naturally land like I might even move mine back so that it lands ex there we go that's exactly where I want it I might even reinforce that area because it is a tender corner there we go oh, right there boom see the needle down position now I'm gonna lift I'm gonna with my finger here pull this out now I can make the pivot now you want to be careful that you don't sew so you got pull it way off to the side otherwise you're going to create a little pleat right there you've probably done that if you've any done any kind of crafts okay now i believe my fabric is out of the way and i will continue sewing down this side and we will do the same for all four corners but then at the very end remember how we left that um, gusset unsecured to the pet bed well, we'll have the front, the beginning, I should say, the beginning of the gusset and the end, and how to join those, again, for a very finished look. So when I come back, I'll have already done my four corners, and I'll be coming down that final stretch, and I'll show you how to join those up. Okay, the gusset is on the four corners, and I'm coming down that home stretch. Now, how do we deal with these uh the beginning and the end of that the gusset it's really very straightforward and it gives such a nice finished look um i've seen lots of different approaches to this you might even have your favorite approach to this so if you do go with it great but if you don't have an approach or you're not sure what to do let's bring this right over to the pressing mat so you know how when we join the strips we had one horizontal and one vertical and we um, did a diagonal same situation here what we're going to do is we're going to pivot this 90 degrees and you could get your ruler and make sure that it is a true 90 degrees and all I'm doing is lining up this edge and I'm pivoting that why don't we do that up a little bit higher why don't we do that about right up there? All right, and I'm going to press that, making sure that is a true 45 degree angle right there, okay? Let's just check it one more time. I want to make sure. Yes. I use this six and a half inch ruler. I mean, that and the friction pen. And my sewing machine, some threads, pretty much all I use <laughs> to get most of my projects done. So if you don't have one, just pick it up. Of course, I have the big ruler, too. You need that for cutting with the fabric. But just for getting in these small little spots, boy, it's just, it's just ideal. Now, for this one, same thing. Let's use that six and a half. Let's make sure we're all squared up. And now, I'm just going to... Uh, do another 90 degree turn except in the opposite direction and I'm going to press this and I've got this big tail out here you know what this isn't helping me at all I'm just going to trim this away you can just add that to your stash for maybe a scrap quilt or a craft down the road so now I've got two very nice press, press really, really well, because you're going to need to get a good look at those um, presses, because at this point, grab some pins. I'm going to lie this over top of here. I want one uh, crease to be exactly on top of the other one. And I'm just going to pin this. Okay, one, keep one stack exactly on top of the other. Get the other fabric out of the way. And you can even leave, like, I see now I should have probably started that not sewn quite so snug so I don't have to worry about, I mean, this will definitely work because I can just take that, but I just have to be really careful I don't sew into my main fabric. So if you stop a little bit further back, you'll have more of a gap in here. 
and you don't have to worry so much. Now you'll go ahead and sew down here, press open and trim, and then you're gonna go ahead, you'll have that little space that is not sewn down, and you'll just sew that. To, let, me, let me just show you that step because I want you to absolutely get this. So let's take this to the sewing machine. Let's take this time to do this together. Because if you've never done this before, this can be really intimidating. All right, let's take this to the sewing machine together. Making sure that when I moved it, nothing shifted. Now I am looking right down that crease right now. That's exactly where I'm sewing. Okay. So just like before, Take that to your pressing mat. We'll get that back out. Working with such a big dog bed takes up a lot of space on my table here. So we'll go ahead and trim it just like we did before. All right, let's just do, let's just do the whole thing. I would use different scissors, but this is what I have at the moment. Just like before, you know, just make it work. All right, press that. And now, look at that. Now, all we need to do is take this to the sewing machine. Just secure that little bit that's not stitched down. get that out of the way and now the gusset is let's see how finished this looks the gusset is ready to be attached now to the flaps now with the flaps what you'll do these are ready to go they're basted together there's only one thing that you need to do that we didn't do previously let me get this right out of the way so you can see the whole thing Using that friction pen again, you're going to pull, let's line this up on our mat so that you see exactly what I'm doing. You're going to pull this over to the right so that I see my corner right there and I can feel this little seam. I'm gonna mark this spot real quick, okay? And you're gonna do that on all four corners. Let's just do this one again so you see what I'm doing. You're always pulling to the outside. And you can see the mark where I marked in before, but you've got a seam right there. So really, you, know, you're, you can just feel it. Mark right there real quick. Now, you're gonna snip in straight up that line. Remember how before you went on the 45? Well, this is the 45 when you when this lays out flat. See how that happened? So you're marking up a quarter of an inch and you're gonna snip up there. That's what makes the corner pivot, just like before when we sewed the gusset onto the main fabric, the front fabric, I should call it. Now that the four corners of the gusset have been snipped and ready to be attached to the flaps, Unlike the front side where it didn't really matter where you started, um, you definitely need to, now that your corners are established, you need to pin in those four corners first. So we've got that little snip there and we're going to pin right in that corner because that's going to be our pivot point. So I like to pin in the corners rather than start in a corner 
pin all the way around and hope I end up back at the right spot. I like to pin the four corners and then make the part in between just fit. Um, and then you can see how once that's established and you can be sure you're going to end up in the right spot, then you can just make it work. You just kind of fudge things and adjust things. That's how crafting is. So you'll pin that all the way around and you're just going to sew this together just like you did pivoting in the corners. The great news is they're already snipped for you. Just get there, um, reinforce before you make the pivot, pivot and sew all the four sides. Then, I've done that ahead of time, then my favorite part is obviously turning it right side out. That's always the best part. For the insert, you can use polyfill. Um, there's a product out that I've seen. It's a shredded foam and it's specifically made for pet beds. And it probably washes and launders up just a little bit better than polyfill, which can tend to clump and bunch. So if you are anticipating actually using this rather than, you know, your pet's going to use this on a regular basis and that you will be actually washing the, the pillow insert, you might want to just invest in that shredded polyfill, um, foam instead of the polyfill. So now that that's ready to go and isn't that adorable, um, and we have that available, the paw prints, we have the dog bone fabric, cute fabric available on the website. Um, for the insert, it's done exactly the same with one exception, and that's that there is no flap. It's just stuffed. So you'll have the front side, the back side, and the gusset. All you need to keep in mind is when you're sewing the whole thing to get together, just leave one side open so when you, after you stuff it, um, or you'll be able to turn it right side out, stuff it, and then we just whip stitched it closed by hand, and you're ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make an easy pet bed with shabby fabrics.